and that defense doesn't even really need transforming. It's already got him to the NFC Championship game. So, uh, I mean, they're going to be a heck of a threat. And uh, in that NFC West, of course, the big news of the day uh, that we have uh, to get into. Uh, I, I, I'm going to th- give a little inside baseball here. The original meat topic here was not going to be about this. Uh, but obviously this kind of broke and it's, it's all we all anybody wants to talk about is the Russell Wilson trade to the Denver Broncos. Uh, as, as you haven't seen the details, Russell Wilson and a fourth round pick are going to Denver in exchange for two first round picks, two second round picks, a fifth round pick, Drew Locke, Shelby Harris, and Noah Fant. Wow. Um, I'm going to get Whoa. out ahead of this thing right now, guys. I, I hate this for Seattle. I don't like it. I mean, it's, I second that. It's, I don't think people are saying Seattle got fleeced. I don't agree with that necessarily, but I just don't, for one, I don't really get the timing. Why, what, what was the need to get rid of Russell so quickly? And why, and I understand that he had the no trade clause, so he kind of had a say where he wanted to go, or he did have a say where he wanted to go. But if it's me and it's just, these draft picks are kids you, you don't know anything about yet. You know, obviously you can scout, but Russell Wilson's a proven top five quarterback. I don't get, unless I'm getting three ones, I'm not trading him personally. And you guys may, may disagree, but Wow. So I, I mean, so here's my thing. I look at the value we've seen for other quarterbacks traded, and I look at RG3 way back in 2012, and uh, Washington, uh, you know, then is something different now, the Commanders, uh, gave up two ones and two twos to get a player that we hadn't seen play. Just that season, we saw the uh, 49ers give up three first round picks for a guy that had never played. And I don't necessarily think those were unjustified moves. You couldn't get, I mean, Russell Wilson. Got more than that, but not enough more for a guy who's been a perennial pro bowler, who has a career passer rating average over 100, and who has a Super Bowl ring. Um, My big issue with the trade, because the assets they got are fine as far as the picks themselves. My issue more so is with the three players. Uh, Drew Locke is awful. Uh, The the three longtime viewers of this channel will know that I think Daniel Jones is one of the worst draft picks of the past 25 years. That being said, Jones has a higher passer rating for his career than Drew Locke does. Drew Locke has shown nothing to indicate he's he's anything of value. Russell Wilson had as many touchdown passes this season, despite the injury that Locke has in his career. Um, you know, you move on to Shelby Harris, fine player, but fine player at age 31 is not something you should be getting in return for the best player in your franchise's history. I mean, he's on a two-year contract. He's going to be you know 31 and 32, and I'm sure he's a good locker room guy. That's what I've read today, but. It, that just doesn't matter. You sign good locker room guys for the vet minimum. You don't get them in return for... There's only got to be one Russell Wilson trade for the Seahawks. It's the only chance they're going to have at this. Uh, as far as Noah Fant, I do like Fant a lot as a player. He's super young still. I think that's, you know, the best asset they got out of this. But if I'm, I'm, I'm Seattle. I mean, the main reason I'm, I don't like it for him is you look at what they got. I, you know, I say keep Locke and Harris and give me more picks. Because, you know, as, as Russell Wilson goes, so do the Seahawks. That roster's awful. Yeah. It is. And listen, I hear you know I hear some rebuttals out there that hey they got four picks, and yeah they did you know uh, but it's it's quality not quantity I mean yeah pick nine yeah that's valuable but the rest of it you got you got players that have a higher chance to be I don't want to put down the these players but. They have a higher chance to be unsuccessful in the league. And then you just got just two. Who was a third player besides Shelby Harris and Drew Locke? No it was a Noah Fant the tight end. Noah Fant, yeah, I'm hearing you can like fetch a, a high two for him on the open market. But, you know, you got Noah Fant, who's never surpassed 750 yards, I think you said. He's never passed 700 he yards. 700, yeah. wow. You got Shelby Harris who's been spent, and you just got Drew Luck. And I mean, I like Drew Luck. Great kid, says all the right things. Great dude, I'm sure, but he's just not a. Uh, I think, I think as Colin Coward said today, um, in NBA terms, the Seattle Seahawks got dunked on by the Broncos. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, for Seahawks fans, you know, when it rains, it pours. Um, they cut Bobby Wagner uh, just a little Man. while ago as well. And I get this one more. I mean, he w- I was on a, a fantastic contract for Bobby Wagner, not so much for the Seahawks. And, you know, I mean, with the era coming to them, but you know, when you, that's another, that's one of the, I mean, he was the last guy from that team that won those, cha- that championship back in 20, I almost said championships, boom, that you know, seemed like that, I mean, that team, that's kind of crazy to me, because you look at, it's like a tornado, they spun up overnight, oh, yeah. and, and they went away just as fast. I thought they um, were the next dynasty, I mean, really, you look at what they had, and how young they were. You know, it's, nightmares. 
yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you, I mean, yeah. Though, I mean, he, he, as, as he said there, I mean, the the Harbaugh and Carol. The, I mean, through those three, four seasons there, I mean, that was that was better than Avengers, any yeah. film. It was like yeah, Avengers quality matchups. He had you know twenty Hall of Famers. It felt like on in those games. But you know, it's crazy to 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 make a reference here right after the Malcolm Butler play. And I'm sorry, CX fans, if you're listening. I promise it, there is a point to this. Um. Keith Olbermann did a segment that following Monday on ESPN and said that they should blow up the Seahawks. And I thought it was absurd because the, yeah. the, the roster being so good. And he was like, but you can't recover from a loss like that. Mm -hmm. uh, little did I know, of course, that we would see this occur again with Atlanta in 2016. And it, as they shamble like oh, a zombie since geez. then, it's very obvious Olbermann was right the entire time. You can't come back from a loss like that. Uh, it, it's too damaging to the psyche because these are, these are people. And I don't think that Sherman and that defense ever really forgave Pete and Russ for that pass. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious that the accountability thing that Russell had or that uh, Carroll had going was was shattered that day. And the Seahawks have been shambling. You know, it's it's hard, it's weird to see, but I mean, I think it's fair to say, guys, the Seahawks roster has been bad for a couple of years now. Well, it's not. Oh, yeah. They've it's been not... they've been the Cleveland Browns. I think we've said before with a good quarterback. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, their rosters had it has bright spots, but as a from top to bottom, I mean, they've had holes and. You know, dra their drafting hasn't been elite other than DK the past couple years. And if you do draft well, you can, you know, Cleveland can happen. You can go from bad to good, but their they last, really haven't been. So. Of their last 52 draft picks, I believe I read that three of them have been pro bowlers and one of them's the punter. I mean, that's, yeah, that's unreal. Just, that's just because um, when Pete first got there, all those draft picks they made, they were just knocking them out of the park, you know, every single time. I mean, they were getting fourth, fifth, sixth rounders. Yeah, and that's what I mean, guys, didn't, they, so. didn't they get like uh, something like uh, Bobby Wagner, Sherman, and Thomas in the first class? I mean, they were exactly, ro yeah. rolling from day zero. Uh, um, just... I, I'll ask this though. So you know, with today's moves gone, with Russell traded, um, and with Wagner gone, and I'm not going to let you count Fan because obviously he was in the trade. I'm um, in. Which players from the Seahawks would you actually even want on your team? Because I I can say DK and Lockett and Jamal, and then I'm and then I stop. It's, I mean, it's a struggle after that. I mean, I think, I think they got the one lineman from LSU, Damian Lewis, who's who's pretty good, but you don't see a lot of assets or, or even young guys that you want to develop, especially on the defensive side. I mean, the defensive well, side I mean, of the ball is kind of the thing is the Seahawks are kind of like the Rams in that they haven't really had picks for the past uh, half decade exactly, or so, yeah. but they also haven't really uh, kept, re retained those guys. I mean, say what you will about the Rams' moves, and I've said plenty uh, in personal conversations. But they've kept most of that core together. Um, I mean, they traded Goff for a different quarterback that they gave up the picks for. They obviously extended Jalen Ramsey. Uh, the only guy that they traded was Cooks, and I think they got a decent haul back for Cooks, if I remember correctly. Um, like, I think they got a two when they traded him to the Texans. I think so, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, I mean, Seattle, you know, obviously the Jimmy Graham-Max Unger trade, uh, that, that was the beginning of the roster downfall. I mean, strange that was, to me. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, Jimmy Graham was fantastic. Like, I, I think it's been lost to history how good he was with that same oh, yeah. scheme. Like he, him, and Gronkowski was an argument, and I it was one Gronkowski had one, but it was an argument. Um, yeah, it was he the was way that elite. Kelsey and Kittle kind of is now, I think. Um, yeah. And he fell off in Seattle due to injury a little bit, due to scheme, I think more so. But the main issue for Seattle is that you know you just don't see you don't trade Pro Bowl centers. It's just very bizarre that they you chose to go that route. Um, and before that, the Percy Harvin trade didn't really work out for them. Uh, it didn't matter because obviously they won the Super Bowl because that 2013 team was just unreal. But yeah, I mean, the Ross, I mean, LJ Collier, Rashad Penny, Malik McDowell. I mean, you look at their high draft picks for the past several years, and it's just, by and large, not been very impressive. I like Jordan Brooks. I think he's okay. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say that. I like him. We'll see if he, he can, can take that next step and take the role of B Wags, but. It's just going to have to. I think, he's, I think he's one of their brighter spots. I think it's fair to say that Seattle is gone uh, for a long time now. I think this is the uh, this is the door slamming shut for good on one on the best era in their team's history. Um. I guess the, the sad thing era, is... Yes, you're right, but <laughs> Seattle owner or chairman Jody Allen, she basically chose Schneider and Pete Carroll over Russell Wilson. Yeah. So the pressure's, the pressure's on them. They have to win, which... And Pete Carroll's 70. I think... I don't think he'll be staying in the NFL for more than five years, but within those five years, more or less, I think he's uh, going to be pressured to win. And so, while the three of us might think that Seattle should blow it up and just start over, rebuild it, let's go from scratch, I think Pete Carroll is going to do everything in his power to try and win some ball games. And, you know, he has the ninth overall pick. He has a lot of more assets now. He can trade Noah Fant. Um, I think Pete Carroll is going to go looking for another quarterback. 
and he's going to determine whether or not Drew Luck is the answer. I know Pete Carroll was at the combine. I think he was mm. at the quarterback day in particular. They said that was the only day he was there. Yeah, exactly. Was sitting, there. sitting next to Lane, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Lane right? Kiffin, exactly. So Matt Corral. Yeah, Matt, Matt Corral's coach. Maybe. So, Maybe. so we'll see whether the Seahawks are, I think definitely think they'll be in the market yeah. for either a rookie quarterback or a veteran, perhaps nice. maybe a Carson Wentz, a Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't, I don't think we're uh, we're afraid to send him up there at all. And uh, no, maybe uh, a Kirk Cousins or a Matt Ryan. I mean, I and, think. and, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the guys who tore that, put that roster together are the guys that tore it down, are the guys that are being allowed now to tear it down again so they can try to build it back up. And yeah, as you said, Pete Carroll's in that Belichick age range. And, you know, and Bill's the greatest of all. Win. He's got to be slowing down. And moreover, he, you know, the Patriots didn't enter a slash and burn rebuild. Tom just left and they've had to you know, put it back together. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine Carroll's coaching 10 more years. Good grief. He'd be in his 80s in the NFL level. I just don't think you can do it for that long. No. And so if they are trying to win now, I mean, Matt Ryan of the names you mentioned would be the, the best choice, I think, there. But then you're giving up assets again and, and you're, you're just cycle, you're just shuffling around deck chairs. You're not actually improving. Um, I mean, I think, I think the Seahawks are worse today than they were yesterday. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think if this was like a quarterback draft class of last year or, or maybe maybe this doesn't hurt as bad. Because none of us and most of the draft experts don't see a blue chip or even like a, you know, a diamond in the rough kind of. So if this was like a blue chip quarterback year, you know, you can go up there and maybe not a first overall. But and if, they, if this was exactly the same as last year and they got Justin Fields at nine, they'd be a different area entirely. You know, that you'd feel a little better. I mean, you still would feel great, but you feel. But I don't see that. I mean, maybe we're just all wrong. And like I said, one of these guys is probably going to be good. But it's just a, there's not as many blue chips, I feel like, this year at the quarterback position. So that. Maybe they'll have to get a free agent, but if they get a Jimmy G or somehow a Matt Ryan that they would have to trade for, I mean, is that – that'd be better, yeah, but, man, that's just tough. Here's the thing. Yeah, Pete's going to have to win now. So, I, mean, he's... I mean, the Seahawks scheme, when it was at its best, I, as, I, don't, I think it could have been functional with most quarterbacks because they had Unger, and more so they had Marshawn behind him weighing 260 pounds, bowling over everybody. The Seahawks O-line is in, is in shambles for the most part. It's better than it's been in the worst years. It's and, you know, bad. Chris Carson's hurt, and Rashad Penny has never been anything special. Um, that's a deep concern. But let me say this, and this is kind of what, one of the things I think is, is going to be really fun about uh, the Great Pretenders, is uh, the Hot Take Bible. This is, gonna, this is the goal is to mm. kind of keep, keep us honest on our takes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, just to kind of, and if we're wrong, you know, you can call us out on it and say that we put it down. So I'm going to, I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll sink or swim, I'll throw the first one out there. This is my first official Hot Take. Uh, I believe DK Metcalf has played his last snap as a Seattle Seahawk. Oof. I really do think that he looks at what happens today, and he's not in, in, interested in catching passes from Drew Locke on the last year of his rookie season. I think he's going to force the hand, uh, and I think you know by the by the time we get to August, uh, he'll be wearing a different uniform. Yeah, I mean, you could be right, but I mean I, that that would kind of lead to a Seahawks trying to blow it up type deal. So does it? I don't know, man. This is just wild. Well, it's I mean, a value thing. I mean, you look at the wild. Vikings, and they didn't think they were blowing it up when they traded Stephon Diggs for all those yeah. picks, and they drafted Justin Jefferson. Uh, I mean, if you can get two ones out of Metcalf, and I think he's the kind of guy at his age that's worth that. Um, you know, I, a lot. with where they are, I think it's more than reasonable to assume they do that kind of thing. Um, wow, yeah, that that would be interesting for sure. Uh, well, what does that mean for like Lockett then? Because he's an older guy, probably still worth a little bit. Do they? I mean, that's what well, I'm I've saying. Seen, do they I've seen Lockett rumors this afternoon. I don't understand them just because of how his contract is designed. I don't. I mean, Seattle would yeah. take such a cap it. I don't even think they can justify it. Didn't they like lose money by trading Russ already? Like their their cap situation has to be hell at this point. I think they, I think overall today's moves gained them like seven hundred thousand in cap uh, relief, which is just uh, a, bizarre. Un, unreal. Um, but I, I don't know how, where the guarantee set. They could maybe do something in trading Lockett like the uh, Jags did for. Uh, uh, when they traded Nick Foles to the Bears, and the team they traded him to took up more of the bonus than expected. Yeah. That was an absurd trade in its own right. I can't believe yeah. Jacksonville got out of that. Like, the only good move Jacksonville's made since that 2017 season is, is somehow trading Nick Foles for anything other than... <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Um, but, you know, um, any final thoughts, boys, on the on the on any of the Seahawks moves today? Uh, well, the, uh, the, I just want to say about the emotional roller coaster of... Of uh, you know Broncos fans like Jerry Judy tweeting out I'm gonna be sick or whatever when Aaron yeah, Rodgers uh, returns with the Packers and then five minutes later they get rest so you're just yeah, yeah I mean I, gotta, I'm gonna, well, I, 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 I have Broncos fans though I mean I, wow. yeah no Denver well I, 
I'm almost not. <laughs> it's almost not fair. You get you get Elway by accident, you get Peyton by mm-hmm. accident, and now you get Russ by accident almost. <laughs> I mean, it is back into these franchise uh, quarterbacks. They don't draft them right. And the only best one they've drafted probably is Tebow. <laughs> that's going to be yeah, a crazy offense. I like, the, I like the offense a lot. So, at least that franchise is consistent about it, right? I mean, oh yeah, they can never they can never draft their own guys, but hey, at least they're good at getting they, other they figured out anyway. I mean, so get you, know, the, the you know, the the biggest loser today, as far as actual contention in the twenty twenty two season, is probably the Chargers, who just went, went moved to third in their division. I think. Um, wow, don't you, oh, don't you feel bad for Derek Carr? Like, look at the quarterbacks he has to yeah, play. I think, in. I think it's got to be the Raiders. Man, yeah. look at those quarterbacks. I mean, Derek Carr's good, but you got Mahomes, Young Herb, who we all think is. Elite and even getting yeah, better. Yeah, uh, you're, than you're, much, so you're just... Chargers fans. You'll not find a bigger Justin Herbert fans than this podcast. Oh, um, for sure. For those of you guys who watch baseball as well, uh, Justin Herbert throws the deep ball the way Ken Griffey Jr. used to swing the bat. I mean, yeah, it so is sweet. the best deep ball I've ever seen. Yeah, it's just um, mesmerizing. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, and it's a shame of it. I mean, like we're the, the I mean the the good of the good news of it is we are guaranteed wars now. And uh, there's going to be. I mean, oh, even the Raiders West, with, yeah. with Carr. I mean, every one of those games they're is going to be must watch television. No, the Raiders are not a bad team. Josh McDaniels has that stigma of uh, his last up of that guy that bailed or whatnot. He bailed yeah. on the Colts. Well, he bailed on the Colts, and he's the guy who washed out in Denver. So I'm sure they're going to love getting to play washed him twice in here. Denver. So. Yep. That'd be crazy. Well, I was going to have this chip on his shoulder to do well, and so yeah. you know he he wanted to win before, and it was it was going to be it was going to be hard, but now it's going to be even more difficult. Now, you go, now, Den- now Denver's good. Now Denver's <laughs> yeah. Josh McDaniels, uh, good luck with that. Good luck that whole Look division. McDaniels, because if you go back a year or two, I, I the hand he's dealt in Oakland, it's actually uh, sorry, Las Vegas. It, I. It, it will always be Oakland to me, guys. I, it's going to take forever tough. for that yeah, to ever that's change. So tough. But, I mean, you look back at that Raider, those Raiders rosters. I mean, the one that had Trent Brown, uh, Colton Colton Miller, uh, Rodney yeah. Hudson, Incognito on the O-line. I mean, that I'd much rather have been handed that team than the one he's being handed now. Yes. Um, and, you know, obviously there was the situations with uh, Arnett and Ruggs this season that nobody could have foreseen. Uh, but, you know, by, by no through no fault of the their, their own, as far as the front office, you know, the Raiders are a worse team today, I think, than they were at this time last year. Um, and yeah. so it'll be up to... I mean, it'll be interesting to see how Gruden moves on from the Mayock era of just burning first-round picks in... I mean... Oh, horrible. They, they weren't even all terrible players. They were just bizarre timing. Like, bizarre Colin Farrell picks. at four, Alex Leatherwood. Uh. Um, you know, the only pick that really, really panned out was, was Josh Jacobs. And even then, uh, he's had some injury problems. Also, but... really good. Is that one of Gruden's Colton Miller no, is I mean, better, I think. Yeah, um, better. I can heard some rumblings better. that Colton Miller is was not as polished because if you guys remember that whole uh, thing during that draft was seventeen. McGlinchey Miller. Yeah, there yep. was a coin McGlinchy flip that basically determined who got uh, McGlinchey. Yeah, so and the Niners, the Niners won. won. They got McGlinchey. But I've been hearing rumblings that Colton Miller has is the is the higher upside tackle. Even though um, McGlinchey was like the the better. So from everything I read, uh, McGlinchey out of the roster. gate was significantly better, and in recent times it's leveled off because McGlinchey's hit his ceiling. And is Colton uh, Miller is he good now? Is he good he's player? been Im- he's been improving. Um, from everything I've heard, he's been improving. Um, PFF grades have looked solid. Um, you know, I hate to, I hate to be this guy. I will not be this guy very often, but his Madden rating's gotten better. Um, and for offensive linemen, I mean, you, you put a little bit into that, I think, just because it's so hard to grade for the layman. Uh, outside of the David Bakhtiari's and the Tyron Smiths, it's hard to say for sure. But um, from everything I've heard, he's been on the upswing. Um, really, I just want to see how the Patriots short game offense works. Uh, and if the Raiders, uh, I mean, Hunter Renfro seems to be one of Belichick's lab built scrappy oh, yeah. you know, slot receivers. And Brian Edwards had a better season. I think he's been he's been getting better, too. Uh, the question is, I wonder if they do want to try to replace Henry Ruggs' production with a receiver in this draft class. I think they got to go O-line. It's just too bad. They got rid of so many. But we'll see. Who I, is Nito still. still around? I don't think so. I mean, he's got to be what Raiders? forty years old by now. Yeah, I don't he's, think he's, he's up there. 